you know, we've got a flavour of just how incredible the atmosphere is going to be in that stadium, which is, I think, the one thing that this team has struggled with throughout the entirety of the Conference League, is actually going away from home and dealing with the pressure and dealing with the crowds. That's one of the main things that really worries me about this. You don't know when it's going to come, but you just have a feeling that something great is, is never too far away. Hello and welcome back to the Villa Filler podcast. I'm here as always with my good friend Dan Wiseman. Dan, it's preview time. Lil in the Europa Conference League quarterfinals, semi, se- semi, second leg. Huge game, mate. Huge. Hope, knock on wood, knock on wood, guys. Come on. <laughs> only halfway done, guys. Only halfway done. Uh, but, mate, before we get into all that, a lot has happened, uh, as, as you have so gratefully been here to cover. How are you doing, mate? I'm very good, very good. Uh, yeah, very glad to be back at full com- uh, compliment, mate. Back as a duo, as we do best. But um, yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking about all of the solo pods that I've done this season. And I think every time I've recorded on my own, the Villa have done really well. So both of the 1-0 wins over City and Arsenal, I recorded by myself. Um, I think the, yeah, the demolition of Ajax at home, the 4-0 win, I did as a solo pod. And then obviously the wins over Lille and Arsenal, I did on my Todd as well. So I'm not, I don't want to jinx anything, mate, but normally when it's been, been on my own, at least I've had a win to talk about. Maybe we, yeah, maybe we should uh, change the change the format a little bit and only have you to do sort of the, the yeah. previews for the for the big game. Maybe I'll just go away every week. Um, but no, I mean, that's the, I think, yeah, the, one of the, one of the few times I've gone solo this season, um, it was the Spurs loss. And that's obviously quite difficult to talk about, really. Yeah. You know, a lot. So at least you've had more interesting subject matters, mate. Um, and got to just give a shout out to you, mate, and a shout out to the listeners as well who've been watching uh, and listening wherever you may be, whether that's on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Links to all those are in the top of the description as well, guys, in case you didn't already know. But, mate, we've got a game to talk about. We've Well, first of all, I want to, I feel like I, I'm almost obliged to give my thoughts on the week. What a week it's been. Yes. Yes. What a week. You know, for for us to get, and this is kind of like what I was speaking about in the last pod, and I can't even remember what, it, when we we were previewing the Lil Pod. It's so funny, and I sort of tweeted about this today as well. How quickly the narrative is changing between Villa fans, game to game, and I'm just going to ask that people, like it, like, we can only take things game by game, right? But a little bit of perspective. Sometimes we've got to zoom out a little bit because the talk before uh, Man City was. You know, teams like I, I went on about the Man City game too 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 long last time, so I'm going to keep it short. Um, you know, we need to we need to choose the team carefully. We've got Lil, we've got this, we've got that. Don't go and win the game. People go, oh, we've thrown it away. We've you know we've thrown away top four. It's this, it's that. We go and get the will the win at Lil, which is obviously massive and potentially even bigger for our season within the context of hopefully going on to win something, which is I think something that we all want as a fan base is to win the Europa Conference League. Everything seems fine and dandy. And then the narrative all in the lead up to that Arsenal game was, oh, we better not go weakened. We can't throw this away, this and that. And I'm 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 just thinking like, guys, like the gate of ball's not even kicked yet. Let's just let's yeah. just relax a little bit. And then obviously we've pulled up to the Emirates and we've put on a masterclass of forty five minutes, the the only forty five minutes it needed to count. And and now all of a sudden it's on Villa bloody great again. It's like we just, I feel like we just need to chill out a little bit, mate, because people are losing their heads over such silly things, in my opinion. And and as, you know, as I said, you can only take things game by game, uh, and we should when we're you know talking within the context of top four and 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 you know hopefully going on to win the Conference League and and all that kind of things. But like, don't get too low, don't get too high. As long as we maintain that perfect medium. We should end the season with plenty to be happy about, plenty to shout about, and hopefully a trophy to be lifted and a bloody open top bus parade in Birmingham City Centre. That's that's my two cents on the past week. Mate, absolutely right. Absolutely right. I think it's it, I have I think a lot of the kind of conversation this season has been, what would you rather have? You know, the conference league or top four? And I think for kind of certain fans of a, of a certain age and I think you know you and I might even kind of be the cut-off point really but you know we've never seen Villa lift a major trophy um and 
we've kind of grown up in the era of the Premier League and the top six and the, you know the top four places and the Champions League and everything like that. And so, like, so much of the narrative around so many teams in this league is can they qualify for the top four? And so I think it's kind of, you know, become the be-all and end-all for a lot of fans. And I, I totally get it. But for me, you know, winning a trophy and having that kind of that core memory is ultimately what football is all about. And I understand there's so many perks of qualifying for the top four. And I understand it's not even an either-or situation. You know, we could well have both this season and hopefully we do. But... For me, just just ticking that off my bucket list, seeing Villa win a trophy. You know, I've gone so many years in my life, so many thankless trips to Villa Park. You know, we've seen so much trouble and strife over the years. But just kind of, I think a piece of silverware would just mark the return to the top table, not just domestically but European stage. I think it's it, this Conference League is is so important just to kind of break that duck and and put us back on the map. And then, yeah, all of the domestic form and everything like that that can then be the focus. But I just think for Unai, particularly Unai, for his managerial reign, to get that trophy in so early, and I mean, a, a trophy as a Villa manager, no matter what it is, puts you among some elite managerial, kind of the history of the club. Not many managers have won trophies at Aston Villa, certainly not recently. And so Unai would put himself at that top table of like the best managers we've ever had at this club. And I think that would just be great for him. And so, yeah, making sure that we get through what is a very difficult time, get ourselves to Athens, is absolutely the priority for me. It is, mate. It is. And here we are now. One foot is already in the semi-finals currently as we stand. It's interesting seeing how the other legs went, obviously, Olympiakos. Um, I believe they came back to win 3-2 um, against Fenerbahce, which is going to be... Was, was it Fenerbahce? I don't even remember now. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was fun. Rush. I was going to say I was. I was googling some. Uh, I was looking. I was doing some Turkish league trivia earlier at work, and uh, and I, I I had my headset on uh, Besiktas for some reason. Um, but no, yeah, fun about it. Obviously, like who knows how that tie is going to go? Any game in Turkey is always going to be tough. But you know, we're potentially looking at two trips to Athens if we're lucky enough uh, in the semi final and the final. So you know, there's there's so much to play for. Two giant teams still left in the competition littered with you know huge names across both teams you know you'd be quite surprised to see that someone like Leonardo Bonucci is actually still playing a, a relatively high level over in Turkey um, but before all of that we obviously have to get past Lille and this is going to be quite difficult because I believe they've only lost one of their last 38 home games which you know that spans over almost over two years which is an absolutely crazy record uh, it is, in fact, the first time I think they've ever sold out their stadium. I remember seeing a tweet about that last week, which is, is quite interesting. And I'm sure we've all seen the update from the Lille account about potential Villa fans in the home ends. No colours and you'll be fine, uh, which is always interesting. But this is going to be this is going to be really difficult. And I think the one thing that really stuck out to me in the first leg, mate, obviously it's frustrating to sort of give away that goal. And, and I know you sort of talked that game to death the other day by yourself, so we won't go over that too much, but we played the 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 sort of the the trademark Unai Emery offside trap. It like Lil didn't know what to do. Jonathan David could find himself offside so many times, and I, it's it's games like this where we kind of see that Emery is a class above a lot of these European opposition, and that's not to belittle them or diminish them at all. But the level that he operates at and that we're operating at in the Premier League, tactically is far superior than most, if not all, teams in the French League, if we're being completely and totally honest. That being said, it's going to be interesting to see how that dynamic's flipped because we're not going to have as much of the ball in this game. We're going to have, you know, at least 40,000 uh, Lille fans on our backs, which is, I think, the one thing that this team has struggled with throughout the entirety of the Conference League is actually going away from home and dealing with the pressure and dealing with the crowds. That's one of the main things that really worries me about this. Yeah, well, I mean, as you rightly say, mate, their home record kind of speaks for itself. Uh, so, yeah, one defeat in the last 30 odd games. Um, they're undefeated in their last 15 at home. Had a little look myself. I believe you've got to go all the way back to September for a 2 1 defeat at home to a game um, for the last time that they lost a game at home, which is nuts. Um, and so we're really going. And we saw from from the away end of it, look, oh, right, just what, you know, we got a flavour of just how incredible the atmosphere is going to be in that stadium. They really brought 
a lot of color to build the park because you know I, I love the kind of you know we've been very fortunate this year even if you go back right as far as hips right yeah in the playoff oh, game the atmosphere you know we've, we've had some incredible away fans and some terrible ones i think it should be say um nudge nudge led you yeah. but like come to build a park and so we've seen like just how intimidating these european atmospheres can be and this is i think the the trickiest away day of them all I think it, it really is of all the ones that we've kind of had so far. We've had the glitz and the glamour of Ajax, but I, I think combining that with the standard of the team that we're playing, they've got such a fantastic manager. You know, one of the main takeaways I came away from, as you kind of touched on there, mate, was the tactical battle was an absolute joy between two managers that both clubs should feel very, very privileged to have. Obviously, Unai Emery on our side and then Paolo Fonseca uh, on Lille's side, formerly of Porto, of Braga of Shatar Donetsk, of Roma, you know, he's won trophies wherever he's been, a serial winner, both domestically, you know, and he's proved himself time after time on the European stage. And so it was a really, really interesting game. And I think, you know, you, you, those two managers on the touchline definitely wouldn't look out of place on the Champions League stage, let alone the Conference League. And so we're up against such a high caliber of opposition. And I think one of the main things that we should talk about, mate, is that the French FA have been very kind to Lille and they've not played since that 2-1 defeat at Villa Park. They had the weekend off. They've been given a full week to go over the tape, to watch the game back, to learn from where they went wrong, pick up on those tactical nuances like the offside trap and really adapt to their game to bring it home. Whereas we've had a pretty, you know, gruelling and we really had to, you know, keep fighting until the end to get that 2-0 win at Arsenal, which is an incredible result. But all of the focus that would have been on that game. It's a quick turnaround to then get on the flight, get ourselves over to Europe and then prepare for this game. Whereas they've been resting, recovering, learning, getting out on the grass. And so we will see a smarter, more educated, more savvy Lil side on Thursday, which kind of adds to that, the challenge that we face really. And I think that's such a key element to this, that they're going to be fresh at the, and I think whilst they certainly came as a Villa Park with some knowledge of how they play, you know, we were ve they were very hesitant to come and press us. A lot of teams have kind of picked up on that, that you don't want to come on to Villa, which is what we want you to do. We want you to come on to us so that we can then play through you. They were very hesitant to do that. Jonathan David was the kind of sole presser at points and everybody else sat behind him. They're going to have learned more of that stuff and how they kind of adapt to stuff like the offside track, how well they've used the seven days in between those games to kind of focus on things like that will probably, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say this, but that will probably determine the time, I think, mate. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right, mate. I think, you are, I think you're right. And I think as well, if we, should we get past what is a very difficult test here, there's no reason why we can't go on to win it, especially after the week we've just had, you know, to, to go away to the, after what we did to Arsenal at the Emirates and get a win and, and secure our spot in the semi-final would be absolutely huge. Massive statement of intent. Um, there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot to shout about from this game. Not only, uh, you know, the, the the wonderfully worked set-piece goals, uh, which, you know, I feel like it ha almost has to be said, Austin McPhee, all the credit in the world this guy deserves because we've, uh, we've scored so many set-pieces this season. It's absolutely wonderful. And that McGinn one was just, mwah, absolutely beautiful. I... I kind of like John McGinn in, in the sort of wider position that he'd occupied. And I know we sort of saw him at the base of that midfield against Arsenal in more of the Kamara Dougie role, if you like. But I feel like John McGinn's just a different animal when he's further up the pitch and he can influence games. And, you know, he was putting crosses into the box. He, he had Ismaili worried for large portions of the game. Obviously, there was a bit of a double up there at times as well with him and Leon Bailey, generally just causing trouble down that right hand side where, where are you at with John McGinn mate because obviously uh, we'll have Douglas Louise for this game so that probably does mean he he plays a little bit further up the pitch um, it, it, is it in the pivot is it in a similar position you know is the, is the sort of shadow striker what what do you think you know Thursday looks like from from the captain's point of view it's so interesting mate because you know one of the great and now picked up on this in the post game is that if you go back to the Arsenal win at home earlier on in the season, it was McGinn and Tielemans who kind of were the two kind of floating tens that caused so much problems. But obviously McGinn gets the goal and he was instrumental at home. And then you kind of fast forward 
and more by kind of force than by choice, we're forced to play, kind of play him in this deeper role with Tiedemans alongside him. And they've gone from being two tens to two sixes, basically. And they were just incredible. <laughs> incredible. And I th think it will be interesting to obviously in the home game, we kind of played him uh, out wide. We kind of have Rogers kind of in that floating role who, who is just excelling, by the way. And I think he is, it wouldn't surprise me to see him dropped a little bit bit deeper maybe for this one I think when you look at we have to control this game kind of right from the off if and I, I think the kind of the first half is so so important we we have to make sure that we we manage this game and particularly the early stages really because god forbid you know we go out there and we can see the goal in the first 10 or 15 minutes it blows the door of this tie wide open and then without away goals or anything like you know it is just a straight shoot out then until the end and that's the situation that we really need to avoid and I just think that tenacity that with those snapping into challenges and being so instrumental in the midfield winning the ball back and making sure that we can he can then off the load the ball to, to guys like Dougie who can start to dictate the tempo and stuff like that I just think that element of it is so important and I think the main thing for this one is making sure that, you know, if, if we can keep a clean sheet, it doesn't matter if it's nil-nil, like we get through this game, making sure we don't concede is more important than scoring in this game. And so just making sure that we're as tight as possible defensively, it will be such a challenge making sure that, that we keep a clean sheet. But we did it. We did it at Arsenal. We've got that blueprint to work off. And so whilst it's a very different teams, a very different set of circumstances, and so it's, it's not just a copy and paste job, but... That has to be the priority. And I think just making sure that that base of midfield is as solid as possible, given that, you know, Kamara is a non starter for this game. He's, you know, he is nowhere near coming. And so, Guinea and Dougie, I think at the base of midfield, gives us the best chance to do that. And I think that probably lends itself nicely to perhaps Villa's unsung hero of the past four games, Nicolo Zaniolo. We finally yep. found a role for this man. This guy is, he's doing the dirty work. And I think it's, in a way, it's the biggest compliment ever that some people still think he's shit and not offering anything because he's going about this 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 role, this disruptor role. That he's, he's being this physical presence. He's holding the ball up. He's bringing other, other players into play. But he's, he's you know, it's, it's the little fouls. It's the little kicks. It's just, it's the, 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 the petulance of Zaniolo is finally being channeled into something productive and you know anybody who listens to the pod regularly knows that Dan and I both rate Zaniolo but fair to say that he hasn't had the best of times but as Emery has said almost every week now for the past month something's changed and we're starting to see that on the pitch I was amazed at the amount of tweets I was reading um at half time in the Arsenal game saying you know get rid of Zaniolo he's awful this and that he caused Arsenal so many problems. He absolutely cooked Ben White. I I, I can't think of a game... You know, I've watched a lot of Arsenal this season. I can't think of a single game where Ben White was that quiet. Ben, you know, He's usually almost always inside the 18-yard box, you know, putting a, putting a cross a tap in for Saka or Martinelli or Odegaard or whoever it may be. That side of Ben White's game just wasn't there. Zaniolo was there to wrestle. He was there to, to, to sort of pin him back. And... and I feel like that level of of uh, of grit and control is is definitely you know it's characteristic we're going to need in this game, mate, isn't it? I think uh, you can tell a lot by, as you rightly say, mate, Unai's comments, and you know it can't be you know understated that he was voted by Villa fans as our man of the match for the Arsenal game on Sunday, and so it looks like he's starting to convince the masses of his worth, but he's certainly. As you say, something's clicked with the gaffer. So after the Arsenal game, Una and I said um, he was very happy for Nicolo. said at the beginning of the season, it was very difficult and the impression was not easy. But I told you and I told him one or two months ago, something's changed. He was focusing better, training better, focusing on each match as well as helping the team, playing 10 minutes, 20, 35, 45, 60. And we needed him and I've told him before today and he showed us from here until the end of the season, we will need these players available. And so... It's a real glowing report, and I, I'm really happy for kind of the turnaround that Zaniolo has had. And it's such an important season for him because even if you take away that, you know, he needs to find a home, he needs to find a permanent place to play his football, whether that's Villa or, or wherever, 
But even on the on the short term, there's a European Championships coming up this summer, and he wants to be on the radar of. important kind of it's I think he's ending it in the best way possible and it, it just he's starting to come up with big moments when we really need him big goals you know the the equaliser at, Sheff at home Sheffield United the equaliser at West Ham pulling big performances out of the bag like he did against Arsenal you just kind of you he's one of those players that you get a feeling that he from now, now until the end of the season he's going to come up with a big moment and you don't know when it's going to be and you're not necessarily sure when it's going to come but he just gives you that kind of feeling. And when we talk about how close these games are going to be, as Unai kind of said there, we will need these kind of players available to us because him, John Duran, you know, those kind of guys, you don't know when it's going to come, but you just have a feeling that something great is, is never too far away. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. And talking of greatness, mate, Ollie Watkins, how good, how good has this man been? We're talking 23 goals in all comps, 10 assists. The guy is just electric. And if it wasn't for bloody penalty merchant Cole Palmer, you know, firmly, firmly comfortable favourite for me in, in the golden boot race. I forget about Erling Haaland. You know, he, he can ghost for three games as he usually does and then maybe come back and score four and still be in the race. But um, Ollie's been brilliant. Ollie's going to be really important in this game. And I think as well, like, it, I feel like we, we do. We, we maybe take for granted the types of finishing that Oli sort of has in his repertoire. And, you know, that little game, the header, you know, we've seen it a few times this season, but it there's nothing he can't do, is there? And I think that's what's great is, you know, because I'm looking at set pieces in this game and I'm thinking this is where Villa really are going to get their chance to score. I don't think we're going to have a lot of the ball. We're going to have one or two quick counters, you know, hopefully if we're lucky uh, and all going well, hopefully we score one or two from there. But the fact that Oli, you know, able to score from the corner, uh, some excellent blocking from uh, Morgan Rogers in that, by the way, really, really angered Fonseca. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm like the, the types of finishes. I'm, I'm not worried about Oli Watkins not scoring because it almost seems inevitable at this point, doesn't it? What I I I just don't know what to say. I honestly don't know what to say. I love, like I, I I'm very happy with you all back, mate, because I sat here on the Arsenal awesome podcast. I was like, what what, what do I say? He's amazing. He's incredible. He is just like everything you could ever want from a striker. Uh, he, you can play him any kind of way, throw him any kind of chance, be it one on one from distance, just running at a man, and, you know, getting up there from set pieces, wh whatever you want. He can kind of do it all. And his confidence is just through the roof and he's just excelling at everything. Um, he's incredible. It kind, of, it kind of feels that he, he is indispensable right now. That, that you know, he, the, the, I don't even think the first name on the team sheet does it justice. Like he's just he's just amazing, and I think we we the spine of the team is really starting to shine through. It's great to have Guinea back. I've, I've, I think he's been massive in the last couple of weeks. Oli's just tearing it up. Obviously, it'd be nice to have Dougie for this game. He was suspended for the Arsenal game. Powell has been excellent since he's come back. And my kind of unsung hero, you gave a shout out to Zaniolo, but honestly, over the last few games. Uh, I have to shout out Ami mean, Martinez, who I think in, in kind of every one of the last few games has just been immense between the sticks. And so, yeah, from him, like right through to Ali, they're all just playing glorious football right now. And um, I'm just, I'm running out of superlatives, mate. <laughs> well, with that being said, mate, we need a score prediction. We need to know how this is going to go. I'll, I'll give you the liberty of, of going second, mate, because I think Villa are going to get the job done. But I think it's going to be nil-nil. I think we're going to struggle in this game. But I think, you know, I think we'll get through on a nil-nil. I I have this horrible sinking feeling that if we concede, we don't go on and win. So I think we'll have enough to keep it tight. And I think that'll be the objective. It will be not to necessarily win the game, but to win the tie. And you do that by drawing. Yeah, I think it, there's every chance that the winner of the Conference League comes from this tie. I really, really do. Uh, I think if it doesn't, it's Fiorentina, um, who, you know, they only drew nil nil at the Pittoria Pilsen, so they've got it all to do. Um, I, I I really do believe the winner of the Conference League is going to come from this semi final. I think whoever comes through here will get through Fenerbahce or Olympiacos, and then the final, you'd assume against Fiorentina, is, is set up. And I think you fancy one of these sides. So, 
Yeah, I, I think we'll win. Yeah, I think okay. I, I, I think we'll win. Um, I think we'll win two one again. Uh, I, I just have a feeling that um, it's going to be difficult and it might have to be done later on. I, I don't think, not that there is an easy way to win 2-1, but um, I think we will make it difficult and I, I, I think conceding is is definitely on the cards. But I just think I, this, I've got a good feeling. I've got a good feeling. I, I think we'll win. I'll take that. I'll take that. Guys, let us know your thoughts, your prediction in the comment section down below. And we'll be back. Uh, well, Dan, uh, unfortunately, Dan, you, you've got the task of going solo again on Thursday, um, yep. uh, as I'll be on the ground in Lille. But we'll be back. We will be. We'll, we'll still discuss the game together. We'll do that in our preview. Um, but for your sort of quick bite-sized reaction, Dan will have you covered. Yeah. Um, so you guys are going to want to make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you haven't already, like, what are you doing at this point? You've made it this far through the video. You may as well subscribe. Uh, and if you listen on Apple and Spotify, make sure you follow, share, download. All that really helps. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe. And up the